Hi friends. Today's video is going to be an interview, but for a change, I'm the interviewee instead of the interviewer. My friend Stan, who has a YouTube channel called Sassneck, which is Kansas spelled backwards, interviewed me and he posted this about a month ago, but I thought I would bring it to my subscribers as well uh, because a lot of you are interested in retiring and living in Mexico and that's what he was interviewing me about. Apologies to those of you who may subscribe to both of us. Uh, you may have already seen this a month ago, but enjoy. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Take one. <laughs> Take one, yeah. Uh, Pat, uh, he was screwing me up on a video a while back. <laughs> Hello, America. How are we doing today? It's uh, afternoon out here in uh, the BLM in uh, Quartzsite, Arizona. And one of the guys has been sitting around the campfire for the last week or so is uh, Jerry. And he has uh, some information for you, I think, that people may or may not be interested in. But uh, anyway, um, you are American, I'm but an, you don't live in America. I'm an American. <laughs> I'm an American. I used to live in America. <laughs> Hello, America. <laughs> so, but we've lived in uh, Mexico as our principal residence for 20 years. It'll be 20 years this December in 2001. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, what part of Mexico? Mexico City or? Well, uh -huh. uh, about 300 kilometers from Mexico City, Guadalajara. Okay. Guadalajara is the second largest city in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's up in the middle of the country in the high plateaus. Okay, all right. So you have the, I think it's the Sierra Madres along the west coast of Mexico. All right. And the Sierra Orientes, I might not be saying that right, okay. along the southern side. And in the middle of Mexico, it's all very high. Like right. Mexico City is 7,000 feet. We're at right. 5,200 feet right. where I live. Mexico City is higher than Denver. Isn't it? About by about two thousand feet. Yeah. yeah, Denver's like fifty five hundred or something. A mile high city. Fifty two would be a mile. Fifty two eighty if I remember my high school. <laughs> okay, there you go. Fifty two eighty. Okay, so but Denver's roughly a mile. So Mexico City is a mile and a quarter, or almost a mile and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but Guadalajara is kind of the same way. High ele high elevation. It is. And so, uh, one of the reasons a lot of expats live there mm -hmm. is because of the weather. Okay. And that sounds very simple, but the fact is that it's an alpine altitude like Denver okay. and a tropical latitude. Because mm -hmm. once you get down into Mexico below Mazatlan and down towards Puerto Vallarta, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it starts to get very tropical. Like mm -hmm. it turns from this kind of stuff in northern Mexico to tropical... Like Panama. Jungle, yeah. Okay. It, you or know, or, or talking, uh, Costa Rica. We're talking palm trees, bananas, and... And, and okay. coconuts. Really? Not up in the high plateau, though. That's okay. more like this again. Okay. It's not as arid as the BLM out here by right. Quartzsite. But. Right. Um, now, years ago, and um, I was probably 15 years ago, it was on the news there in Dallas, and uh, it was a slow news day, so they had one of these, uh, you know, uh, 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 person of interest stories or whatever, or just yeah. it was a story they had sitting in the wings waiting for a slow news day. And uh, it was like Sunday, Sunday's you know news, whatever. And they had this story about these expats, and I'd never heard the word expats before. And I thought, oh, these people that, are, that have turned their nose on America and, and, and defected, or not defected is the wrong word, but you know what I'm saying? They're not citizens anymore. They're still a citizen here. Oh, absolutely. Okay. And I'm, I'm a legal resident of Mexico, but I'm a U.S. citizen. Okay. And I don't have dual citizenship, so I can't vote in Mexico. Okay. Uh, the word expat has a sometimes negative connotation because it's short for expatri expatri expatriated. Yeah. Or, uh, Expatriate. Yeah. yeah. Patriotic. And, yeah, you're not patriotic anymore. So that's, that's what I thought. That's I mean, not yeah. how we as expats think of ourselves. Uh -huh. I mean, it's still very much you know, red, white, and blue. Yeah. So um, we don't feel good about people thinking that the word expat means expatriated. Okay, so it's not when I when I hear expat 
expat in America, I'm yeah. thinking Soviet defector in Russia. Exactly. And it's and not anything to do with that. Nothing like okay. that. Okay. All right. So past that, then, uh, so these expats are moving to America, or from America down there. And the story was basically about how cheap you can live down there. At that time, it was like six to one. For every dollar here, you could buy six dollars worth of stuff in Mexico or something along those lines. This is 15 years ago. It's the co most common question that we get. Mm -hmm. How cheap can you live? Is Can you live cheap in Mexico? And the answer is yes, you absolutely can live cheap in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Millions, like about 130 million people, mm -hmm. Mexicans, do. But that's not the point. <laughs> okay. The point isn't to go down there and live like a dirt poor person. Like a peasant. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. not the point. Right. The point is that you get more for your dollar. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm not living on my Social Security. Mm -hmm. But I could live on my Social Security down there. Mm -hmm. My Social Security wouldn't buy this, that Jeep, and whatever. Right. Right. But I could live on my Social Security down there, and what I would get would be a much higher standard of living than what I would get in the United States. You spend $200,000 on a house here in America, you can spend $200,000 on a house in Mexico, but it's almost like mansion. Or a very, very nice house. Yes and no. Okay. Yes, if you're not in an area where there's a lot of expats. Mm -hmm. We drive up the economy in the place that I live, which is, by the way, uh, on Lake Chapala. Okay, I've heard. Yeah, that's the exact town yeah. that they were talking about in that yeah that interview. and yeah. it's the largest lake in mexico and along the north shore in a distance of about 20 kilometers are, are lots of little towns the town i live in is ahihik ahihik yeah pronounced or mispronounced most often by ajijik <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah uh and I've yet to figure out two L's equal Y. <laughs> like I'm a, I'm a Rio. You know, well, and in this case, a J equals an H. So. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. Uh, but it's their language. So and the old see. Indian spelling of it is A X I X I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but it's right on the, on the lake it, then, or you got lakefront property? Yes, Lake, just... Chipo lake Chapala is the largest yeah, lake in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's 80 kilometers long, and that's why it's 20 kilometers. And it's high wide. elevation. 5,200 feet. So it's, it's, it's equivalent here would be like Lake Tahoe. But Lake Tahoe is much more snowy and everything. But, but I'm not terribly familiar with Lake Tahoe, but... I, it's yeah. a natural lake. It's not yeah. a man-made reservoir, right? It's a natural lake. Natural lake, yeah. okay. Is it a real pretty scenic lake, or is it more of a kind of a like the Salton Sea over here in California? Well, it's definitely not like the Salton Sea. Okay. There's controversy about whether it's polluted or not, and okay. all of those negative connotations that people always get about Mexico in the news mm -hmm. apply to the quality of the water in the lake, and can you swim in there, and is can the you... lake killing children because of the mercury, and all of that stuff goes on all the time, right. no matter where you live okay. in the world, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, people swim in it every day. They water ski. They sail. They whatever. I know if you Fish. if you go to Google and type in Lake Chapala and, and on images, yeah. you'll see all these uh, real brightly painted fishing boats. Yeah. You know, white with real you know uh, uh, like neon green and neon orange. You know, beautiful bright colors. I know you know, Mexican colors. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about, and yeah. it's at Lake Chapala at the pier, mm -hmm. and they're not fishing boats. Oh, they're not. They're tourist boats because okay. there's an island out there about yeah, it must be like a mile out into the lake, mm -hmm. and it's called Scorpion Island, uh -huh. uh, probably for good reason. We have, a lot of, we have a lot of those. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of fish restaurants out there, and there's an Indian, uh, uh, indigenous people's shrine out there. Anyway, you can take one of these tourist boats, and that's what oh, they okay. are. They're tourist boats. And I take thought it was It looks like, okay, very good. And, and Chapala is the, is the weekend destination mm -hmm. for Guadalajara. Okay. And Guadalajara is 5 million people. So we're not talking about all the expats going the pretty boats. It's all of the Guadalharans who come down for the weekend. Mm -hmm. so this is a Mexican tourist area, okay. not an international tourist Just happens area. a bunch of Americans and Canadians. Yeah. They all well, live there. and a lot of Europeans, too. Okay. There's, we were talking about can you live inexpensively in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I don't like to use the word cheap. Bob yeah. Wells got that covered. <laughs> you know, live cheap. <laughs> live in a van and poop in a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> No, but okay. the housing prices right where we are, mm -hmm. they're not low. Okay. Um, because the expats who can afford it, um, and as I started to say, a lot of Europeans and people who have the means to live wherever they want in the world mm -hmm. um, live there. So the prices for real estate 
is exaggerated compared to the standard in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And it's the same, whether you, if you're at the beach in Puerto Vallarta or Acapulco or mm -hmm. Mazatlan, a beachfront property is going to be a premium. premium. Yeah. Yeah. Just like in San Diego or... or and where we live, I, I, he, you know, in, in real estate, it's location, location, location. Mm -hmm. Well, location, 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 where in, on the North Shore Lake Chapala mm -hmm. is... Ahihi. Okay. That's where I live. Okay. Um, all right. Switch gears here. How safe is it? You got all the. Go I'm. I'm. I'm one of those that's terrified to go to Mexico. I just. You couldn't drag me down there. Yeah. And I'm because I see all the stuff on the news about beheadings by cartel and you know, uh, down there at uh, Juarez across from El Paso. I mean, I used to go through El Paso all the time, so I heard all the news, the local news yeah. there. And another another gang shooting down in, you know, a cartel shooting and killed 40, 40 people. And, you know, I know that's border stuff. You're going to say border stuff. But what about down deeper in Mexico? I mean, is it an issue? I'm not going to say border stuff. Oh, okay. Border stuff is uh, corruption and the police, you know, asking you for more data and stopping you and telling you that, you know, you had a traffic infraction and you got to owe them some money. Mm -hmm. That's border stuff. Mm -hmm. Farther down in Mexico, and, and including the border, but mm -hmm. farther down in Mexico, there are car problems with the cartel. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of the, if, if how inexpensively can you live in Mexico is question number one, is, is it safe is question number two. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel safe down there. Uh -huh. If you live out of the country for a while and watch international news that's mm -hmm. not CNN or, you know, based in the, in the United States, you'll be scared to death to come yeah. to the United States. You know, really? shootings in Chicago. You wouldn't park this in downtown Detroit, you can't. Exactly. I, I downtown Chicago. I I I've always said, um, with reason and experience, mm -hmm. that I feel safer in Mexico than here. Now, that's not the case sitting out here where you and I are in the BLM. I right. feel pretty safe. <laughs> right. But um, just in regard to being in a city, mm -hmm. the cartels in Mexico. In Mexico, it's a transportation business. Mm -hmm. They're transporting drugs all the way through the country to they're, the market. They don't really make it there. It's all made by Colombia. The market's here. The market's here. The manufacturing down in South America. Yeah. Well, Mexico's just the highway. Up. Mexico's a country. And all of the violence. That's the crazy. There you go. All of the violence is cartel to cartel. It's not cartel to the general public. And the cartels don't, they don't like, they don't like uh, publicity. Right. It's not good for business it's to like, have publicity. It's just like the, oh, the old yeah. mob. Hey, let, let, don't, don't make a big scene about it because it, yeah. it brings heat on it. Exactamente. Yeah. And, 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 Exactamente. <laughs> excuse, excuse me. <laughs> exactly. So you probably, you, you speak pretty good Spanish too, right? Well, after, after 20 nearly years. 20 years in the country, it's embarrassingly little. Oh, really? Okay. Well, the, <laughs> you can I, get by. When I first went down there, I said, I don't want to take Spanish lessons from some person who learned Castilian Spanish from Spain in high school, and they're mm -hmm. teaching it to me. Yeah. I want to be able to hear the music. Cause okay, well, go. after 20 years, it's a terrible excuse, but I, I can make it through a hardware store. I'm real good at the hardware store. Okay. I'm real I good. need a screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> Disarm a door. Okay. <laughs> for my um, Mexican friends. Yeah, I kind of turned you here. We were still talking yeah. about the cartel and everything. Okay. Yeah, the cartels, you know, the, as long as you're not buying drugs, doing drugs, or selling drugs, you shouldn't worry about the cartel. Okay. Now, they do have some side businesses. Mm -hmm. One of them is kidnapping and extortion. Okay. And there are uh, um, wealthy Americans who worry about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by wealthy, I don't mean rich. I mean middle-class middle Americans class American. who look rich. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Mexico has a lot of poor people, mm -hmm. very few people in the middle class, and a lot of really rich people. Mm -hmm. And when I say rich, I'm talking about the rich. Okay. Yeah. Those are the people who worry about kidnappings okay. and have bodyguards right. and whatever. It's not well-to-do but not rich expats. Okay. Um, 
So when you go down and you drive this, of course, are you, or do you leave this here in the States and just fly down for your house, or do you take your car? Or? Years ago, when we first were going down there in 2001, 2, and 3, we had an old uh, 88 South Wind motor, 33 foot, and we drove it back and forth. Okay. And we were from Oregon at that time. Okay. Um, several years ago, like four or five years ago, six years ago, actually, uh, we... We changed our immigration status in Mexico mm -hmm. from temporary to permanent. Mm -hmm. And once you're a permanent resident, legally, mm -hmm. you can't have a foreign plate of car in the country. So all of this stuff, the Jeep, the motorcycles, you leave it. RV, it stays here. Okay. And so you just fly down, have a car down down there to drive? Yeah, around? we've got a van and an ATV and a okay. road, Beamer Roadster down so, there. No, no regrets, apparently. I seem pretty happy about it. I don't have any regrets about having a place to live in Mexico, okay. and I love I love people, you know, talking about all of the crap that's going on in America yeah. politically or whatever. Right. And I and I just, for me, I'm kind of apolitical. Number one, mm -hmm. but number two is my 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 smart ass answer is well, I figured out the solution to that 20 years ago. Yeah. I moved to Mexico. Yeah, get out. Okay. Yeah. One of the other things I, I, I wanted to touch on real quick is now. And this is another misconception you cleared me up on at the fire the other night. Um, your house, you can't. You're not. You're not a, Mar a Mexican citizen, so you can't buy property. So you got a house on somebody else's property. Or yeah. how does that all work? It's a very common belief that um, you have to be a Mexican to buy property in Mexico. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. Yeah. It, everybody thinks that. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people do. Common. Yeah. Let me start at the beginning of that story. In 1964, Richard Burton and John Huston went down to Puerto Vallarta to make the movie um, Night of the Iguanas. Okay. And then Elizabeth Taylor followed him down there because she was chasing Richard Burton. Burton. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people know that story. Yeah, yeah. But the rest of the story is that they loved it down there so much that um, they built a bridge between her house and his house because they weren't together yet. Okay. And it's a bridge that goes across the little canyon. It's still there. You can go take a tour. All right. But what started to happen was that all of the Hollywood then, uh, people started going down there and buying a property on the beach. So mm -hmm. the Mexican federal government passed a law that said, unless you're a Mexican citizen, you cannot own property 50 uh, kilometers mm -hmm. in from the ocean right. or 100 kilometers from an international border, which would be... Okay. Belize, Guatemala, and the U.S. Okay. Uh, 50 kilometers is uh, about 30 miles, roughly? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then about, that was in like the, the 1960s. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it was the late 70s or the middle 80s, but they, they, they tweaked the law a little bit in, in order to allow foreigners to buy property, but it has to be held in what's called... I might not have my Spanish word right, but it's fidel, 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 fidel Cosmo. Okay. If you're a Spanish speaker. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does it mean? It sort of means like trust. Okay. So a bank has to hold it in a fidel Cosmo. Fidel, okay. Anyway, okay. a bank has to hold it in trust for you. A Mexican okay. bank. Okay. And it costs... Uh, Three or four thousand dollars to set up this this trust situation with a bank, a Mexican bank, and then it costs about a thousand dollars a year as a, you know, as a fee to the bank to maintain this for you. Right? Have you bought a house in the United States with a mortgage? Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I haven't. I bought property, but yeah, okay. Okay, but anyway, you probably have a mortgage, and you had a trust deed, no doubt. Okay. Which meant that the bank here in the United States held the deed in trust mm -hmm. until you paid it until off. Until you paid it off. Right. Until a condition happened. Okay. Okay. So these things are held in trust by the bank as long as you pay the yearly fees, no problem. Mm -hmm. And you have all the same rights of ownership, just like you, as the owner of a house in the United States, mm -hmm. have ownership rights, mm -hmm. even though you're not really the owner as the bank's holding the title and trust. Yeah. yeah. You don't own your car until you pay it off. The bank actually owns it. Yeah. So. Anyway, it's a 50 or 99 year, people refer to it as a lease, but it's more like a trust deed. Mm -hmm. It's a 50 or 90 year um, 
con contract. Contracts. And it's renewable. Oh, it is? Okay, I thought once you got it, and then it they get the, And the it passes to your heirs. Okay, see, that's what I've heard. You, know, you, you can lease it. Well, you okay. lease the land. You rent the land for 100 years. You build a house on it, you're going to die. You know, if, if you're 70 years old and you bought that, built this house, you're going to die. And, you know, you're not going to live 100, 100 uh, years down there doing it. But you pass it on to your kids. But once that 100 years is over, the people that actually physically own the land, guess no. what? they got a free house. No, it's renewable. You own Okay, I didn't know that part. Yeah. Okay, well, the federal government owns the land. That's it, it, on my property. Mm -hmm. I have about a half acre lakefront property, uh -huh. and you know, gardens, big house, full of pool, mm -hmm. whatever. I don't own my trees. <laughs> the federal government of Mexico retains ownership of all the trees. So if you ain't I, getting our trees. So, <laughs> so I, and you'll see places where the wall is built like this, and then it's built around the tree like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're around Mexico, you'll see that. It, What's and, the purpose of this? Because so it's easier to build the wall around than it is to get a permit from the federal government. But why would they want the tree? Why? No, because it's a conservation thing. Oh, so you can't cut it down. Yeah. You got a big dirty palm tree that's blocking my view. Cut it down, and they don't want that palm tree cut down. Exactly. <laughs> so, and to, to trim trees, you're supposed to get a permit. Okay. Now, you know, it's it's okay. it's still Mexico, mm -hmm. and a lot of things that are laws. Um, yeah. Not everybody pays attention to it. Okay. Let, me, let me just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like the drug cartel. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But yeah, um, yeah, you've you've uh, well, go, corrected well, me on a lot well, of well, misconceptions okay. that I had. But about owning property, then mm -hmm. outside of they call it the restricted zone, uh -huh. fifty kilometers from the ocean, hundred kilometers from the border. Mm -hmm. You buy property, you own it by direct deed, and anybody can buy it. It's just, just like here in America. Yeah, it's Article 27 of the Mexican Constitution uh -huh. says that um, anybody can be treated in terms of a land sale uh, as a Mexican citizen as long as you pay a fee that's called an Article 27 fee. So when we okay. bought property, in order to put our names on a Mexican document, mm -hmm. we had to pay at the time, and this is many, many years ago, I don't know what it is today, about the equivalent of $500 mm -hmm. to be treated as a Mexican citizen with regard to putting our names on a direct deed. Okay. So there is yeah. paperwork and, and uh, ways to, to do this. Okay. I just, you know, uh, I heard that story or watched that, that news report. I'm like, hmm, never really thought about going to a different country. I'm thinking, you know, go find some state to live in. Like, I don't know, Mississippi's pretty low cost. Of, you know, so move to Mississippi or move to... Nevada or Alaska, they actually pay you to live in Alaska, I think, or they used to anyway. Yeah, if you're but, part but, of the oil, if you're, yeah. yeah, so, but, um, so I got to thinking, where's a good, inexpensive place so my dollar would last longer here in America? And then I saw that show, and I'm thinking, hmm. And then there's Mexico, and there, what are some of the other, Belize, some of the other countries that are really good, Ta Taiwan, we got a, a good friend of mine that goes to Taiwan every year, Panama, or Tha Thailand, Thailand. Panama, Ecuador. Uh huh. Yeah, but a yeah. lot of people live in. Cuenca, Ecuador. Okay. What about like Costa Rica? Is that good or? Costa Rica is probably expensive. Okay. Um, it's a pretty good country though. Yeah. So that's why it's expensive. Okay. Um, but yeah, people go run, run around the country. They go to the Philippines and places like that, yeah. you know, and travel around the world. And it's a lot cheaper to live there. And uh, I've got a friend of mine, Rick, he goes to Thailand every year. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said, man, isn't that a high dollar, you know, the plane, the plane ticket. I mean, you got to store your RV and everything. He's the one with the Bluebird school bus, if you remember that video. Anyway, he takes off and flies down there, and I says, man, that's, that's got to be an expensive airplane ticket. And he goes, yeah, but the money you save for yeah. the six months you're down there makes it more than worth it. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he says, it's a totally different culture, and I love it. Um, and, and then he comes back up here and spent, you know, I guess he can only stay there for six months or something, or he can't leave. The, I don't know what it is, but it's something about six months. Well, yeah. a lot of countries have a, a you have, Canadians to, have, a, are like you have that. to have a visa to, well, Canadian is different. There's a different reason, but. Like, if you go to Mexico as a tourist, you can get a maximum of 180 days in the country mm -hmm. without having to leave. Okay. And Canadians lose their health insurance if they're out of the country That's for more is. than six months. That's yeah. what it is. That's a different yeah. deal. Okay. But here in America, we can leave and don't have to come back to America, but you're, the, the country only, you're going to, they won't let you stay. Like, I'd love to go to, like, uh, New Zealand. Yeah. You, know, you can go down there as a tourist, but to, be, to go down and become a citizen, forget it. Yeah, yeah. it's almost impossible, they say. So They say... Er, Uruguay is a really easy country to immigrate to if you want to become a citizen, like if you need to get a different passport. Yeah, where's Uruguay at? 
in South America. Okay, all right. Didn't know that one. I, I heard it, but I couldn't think where it was at. Uh, yeah, there's. Huh, okay. There are people who need to get a different passport. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the cartel. <laughs> Just you know. I keep I keep joking around, but anyway. Um, uh, so yeah, all the questions I kind of had about that, you uh, you kind of steered me back onto the right. You know information i guess because i was i was uh, you go down there, you can't buy land you, you go down there the, the cartel's going to kill you you go down there you, you can live cheap now living cheap versus living inexpensively is different in, in your opinion right i mean you can live you go down there and live like a like a, a, a peasant like the, the a lot of the peasants that leave mexico trying to come up here you can live really cheap but then you're living on rice and beans in a hut right a lot of people out here are living cheap yeah. And one of the things you do to live cheap is you don't turn your hot water heater on and use your propane unless you're going to have a shower. Right. You can, do, you can do that in a you, fancy house. You say that out here in, in BLM and everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. You go, to the, you go to the suburb is, in, in my, Phoenix and they're like, why would I return the my, water heater? My gardener does that. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so what do you have, a gardener and a maid and all this kind of stuff, a cook? Or do you do all that yourself? I do. I do. Okay. I, I don't have a cook. But. Okay. Right. We have a guard. Gardener comes uh, three days a week, and maid comes two days a week. There you go. There you go. And that that is very inexpensive compared to a maid or a gardener here in America, right? About five dollars an hour. Okay. Well, there you yeah. go. All right. So, and to them, that's decent money, right? It's very good. It's very the good minimum money. wage, uh, federal minimum <laughs> wage in Mexico City, is about uh, twelve dollars a day. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That worked for that worked good back in 1950 here, but not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Okay. Another thing you haven't asked me about that a lot of people do is healthcare. Oh, okay. We're uh, 35 miles out of city of five million that mm -hmm. has world class healthcare mm -hmm. and private care. Mm -hmm. There's also government programs. Mm -hmm. We have um, the government health insurance in Mexico, socialized medicine. The hospital I go to is five years old. Okay. The doctors are excellent. It's not like a third world hut with cots on the floor. No. It's a nice hospital. It is health care for the masses, so there might be long waiting lines. And that's pretty typical of socialized medicine anywhere in the world. Right. You hear the stories about that in Canada. In Canada and England and all that. Yeah. Um, meds are included. And my premium, are you sitting down? Mine's a little more expensive because I'm 75 years old. Okay. I have to pay $400 a year. For all your medical, period? Or yeah. just the meds? And there's no cash register in the system. Okay. If you're in the system, you're in the system. Really? Okay. There's no billing, there's no co-pays, there's no nothing, and it includes meds. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> now... <laughs> That's why we moved down there in, when we were 55 years old. Yeah. You got like a opening beside you. Your neighbor house is empty. Matter of fact, they do. It's about 160,000, and it's a two-bedroom condo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I would have to kind of rethink this because I, you know, my you know my you, perception of Mexico is you go down there, you get killed, or they, they you know, whatever. You, you know. know what you do, Stan? Yeah. Is you fly down to Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. That's uh, from what are you, Dallas. Mm -hmm. That's a $400 round trip ticket. Okay. And um, uh, I think it's 25 minutes from the international airport mm -hmm. uh, to get a B&B. &B. Uh, and we're not saying this for YouTube, but if you happen to know me, okay. <laughs> I have a guest room, but the rest of you don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got a lot of, lot of comments on this. Hey, set me up with him. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, and, and, you, and you check it out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Spanish is not a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, English is not a problem. Okay. I mean, the, the Mexicans that live in these touristy areas like, like Cancun, and places yeah. like that, they... they it behooves them to know English or even other languages because if a lot of French people come to that particular area, they want to know French so they can serve and get better money and tips and everything. My maiden right? gardener refused to speak English. Really? But they understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have to get be careful what you're saying. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. What uh, What else? There was. Oh, uh, you have a YouTube channel too, right? Or, or uh, uh, you have like a Facebook or... 
what, uh, I have different a, things that you can follow? I have a YouTube channel that uh, uh, is pretty popular with people who are of retiring age or getting mm -hmm. close to it and would like to think about what we're, moving, what we're talking to Mexico. about right now. Yeah. Here. Okay. It's called JC Travel Stories. Okay. And um, it's been up for, I don't know, three, four, or five years. It's got over 300 videos. And mm -hmm. when I'm in the States, it's about RVing and, you know, the stuff we're doing out here. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, when I'm at home in Mexico, it's about retiring and living in Mexico. Okay, very good. So they can kind of follow you there and learn learn different things that we've talked about here. And, and uh, all right, very yeah. good. All right, well, um, this is a pretty long, wow, 30-minute long video. So Perfect. we better go. I, I try to keep them to 10, but if it's a good, interesting subject, let, let the camera run. So, yeah, I'm, th I'm glad you kind of, well, we talked about it around the fire the other yeah. night, and you, well, I'm going to move to Mexico and get down there and get killed. And he set me straight. Yeah, I go down there. Yeah, you can live on peanuts down there. It doesn't cost you. No, you, you can live like a, a peasant down there and save a ton of money, but you can you can live very well in a very nice climate and uh, uh, a nice house. And like, I didn't even think about the, uh, the, the, the medical stuff you brought up. I didn't, yeah. even, I didn't even think that didn't cross my mind. I, 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 I guess I think of Mexico and I'm thinking of you know a mash unit or something. I'm just you know it's a, it's a hut yeah. with a bunch of cots and you know you're sick you die you know. My standard of living in Mexico is much higher than what I would have in the United States. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to talk about my finances, but you know it's not too bad. I'm not camping in a 40 foot diesel pusher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. still, um, for the amount of money I spend, is my monthly expenses mm -hmm. i live much better in mexico than I, I would here for the same amount of money right. that's what i was and that's understood. and that's the point yeah, yeah. Okay. it's not about living cheap it's about living better there you go good set good 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 way to phrase that so all right with that we'll uh, let it go and uh hope you enjoyed this and uh we'll see you all in mexico i guess hey if you like me give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when i post next Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.